In this lecture, you'll learn about the basics of hubs and switches, and I'll do a comparison between the two. The functions of hubs and switches are very similar. You take your end hosts in your local area network, like your PCs, your servers, and your printers, and you plug them into a hub or a switch with an ethernet cable, and those end hosts are then able to communicate with each other through the hub or the switch. In the picture here, we've got a Cisco 2960 Catalyst switch. It's a 48 port model. So obviously you could plug in a maximum of 48 hosts into that switch. But what if you've got more than 48 hosts in your campus, which you probably will have? Well, in that case, you're going to have multiple switches in your local area network, and your switches will be connected to each other with Ethernet cables again. That's your inner switch links. So I said we were going to compare hubs and switches. We'll have a look at hubs first. Hubs always operate in half duplex mode. That means that the attached hosts can either send or receive data. They can't do both at the same time. All of the hosts that are plugged into that hub share the same collision domain, meaning that only one device can transmit at a time. If two devices do transmit at the same time, then they will detect that and they'll back off and they will then resend to make sure that there's not another collision again. The method that is used for detecting and recovering from collisions is CSMA CD. That's carrier sense multiple access with collision detection. Okay, so hubs, half duplex, and a shared collision domain. With switches, on the other hand, they can operate in either full duplex or half duplex. And in practice, they're always going to operate in full duplex mode because that's much more e efficient. When they are operating in full duplex, the attached hosts can both send and receive data at the same time using their receive and transmit wires. Also, all hosts have their own dedicated collision domain. So because of that, we're not going to have collisions. A collision detection mechanism is not required. Looking at the OSI stack, switches operate at layer 2. Our hubs operate at layer 1. So hubs, they're not MAC address aware. And whenever a frame is received on a port, it's flooded out to all the other ports apart from it was the one that it was received on. And because of that, all hosts that are plugged in there are going to receive the frame, so they're going to have to process it at least as far as seeing that it's not for them. Switches, however, operate at layer 2 of the OSI model. They also operate at layer 1, obviously, they've got physical ports on there. This means that switches are MAC address aware. Whenever a frame is received, the switch will look at the source MAC address in the layer 2 Ethernet header, and it will learn that MAC address. It will then add that MAC address to its MAC address table, which is a mapping between the MAC address and the port that it is reachable on. If a unicast frame is later received where that MAC address is the destination, the switch will only send out the relevant port, unlike a hub that floods it out everywhere. This is better for performance and security as frames only go where they are required. Whenever a frame is received for the broadcast address or an unknown unicast address, it would be un unknown because the switch hasn't learned about it yet, it will be flooded out all ports apart from the one it was received on. Okay, so that was the basics of hubs and switches and the difference between them. We'll be having a look at switches in a lot more detail as we go through the other sections of the course. We're not really going to talk about hubs anymore because hubs aren't used anymore. Back in the day, like 15 years ago, hubs were commonly used because switches were very expensive. Switches have come down in price so much now, though, that you can't even buy hubs anymore. Switches are always used. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with Cisco Networks for free, 
then you can download my 400 page CCNA lab guide, which you can see above my head right now. Also check out the video about my CCNA course. It's the highest rated course online. Thanks.